Hey, this is Mike Freilink. I'm the pastor at The Gathering, and I'd like to welcome you today as you listen to this week's message. I pray it encourages you, challenges you, and draws you closer to God and His purposes for your life. Today is a message that will hopefully challenge and equip you to engage in the purposes of God in your life with increasing fruitfulness, increasing power, and increasing intent. We're going to get a bit teachy today, so posture your heart to receive, and we'll get straight into it with our key passage of Scripture, and then we'll pray. John chapter 20, verse 21. Then Jesus said to them again, peace to you. Again, I feel that's a word for some people in the room here today. Jesus is coming to you and saying again, peace to you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. As my Father has sent me, I am sending you, or more accurately translated, as we'll discover in just a moment, as my Father has sent me, in the exact same way, I am now sending you. I want to share with you today a message titled, In the Same Way. Everybody say, In the Same Way. In the Same Way. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your presence. We thank you for Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, we declare that you are a welcome here in our hearts, in our minds. We pray that you might move and have free access here today, that your word, God, which is living and active, would find good soil in our hearts, that it would take root and produce a harvest, a harvest of life. I pray that we wouldn't leave here the same as which we came in, that we would leave different, empowered, enlightened, convicted, comforted. Holy Spirit, that you might lead us into truth today. You are the great illuminator. Come and reveal truth to our hearts this morning. Empower us and equip us to be all you've called us to be, to do all that you've called us to do. Holy Spirit, would you come in this place? Would you come in our hearts? Would you come and reveal truth? In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Amen. So as Jesus appears to his disciples after his miraculous resurrection from the dead, he, he says something quite profound. And I've, I've read this passage of scripture so many times, and I've always come away with it with the same one main point. And, and this main point is incredibly powerful and incredibly challenging, that we now as followers of Jesus, are to go. That Jesus was sent by God, and he is now sending us. Sending us out there to take all that Jesus has modeled to us and deposit it in us to take it out, ever outward. The direction is always out. Bold faith, which is God's word to us and over us here at the gathering in 2023, is always moving out. Bold faith is not directionally challenged. It is always outward and towards, towards need, towards mission, towards promise. Faith is never about retreat. Faith is never about self-preservation. In fact, the writer of Hebrews states in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, but my righteous one will live by faith. And I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. God says that I am displeased with those who shrink back. Ouch. Don't just gloss over that. Consider that in your own life, even for just but a moment. 
how have you? Or maybe how are you currently shrinking back? Because we are called to live by faith, not to engage faith, not to have a flirting relationship with faith, but to live by faith. Bold faith always moves towards. So Jesus says to all that are his, go. Go. Matthew chapter 18, uh, 28, starting at verse 18. A passage of scripture that we, most of us here would know very well. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Once again, don't gloss over that. That's incredibly important. All authority... Heaven and earth has been given to Jesus. Therefore, because of that, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Even another incredible promise to us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. That in our going out, his promise is to always be with us. So Jesus says, go. Like we, we get that, right? That as Jesus followers, that we're not stationary ones. We are sent ones. That we gather in moments like this as the church. We gather to be equipped. We gather to be encouraged. We gather to be ministered to. We gather to minister to him. But after our gathering, we, we're again uh, in just a little moment's time. We will we'll leave the deck after some great fellowship and we'll be thrust out and sent out into all our worlds again to be ambassadors of Christ. We are not stationary ones. We are sent ones. We are not meant to be containers. We are meant to be conduits. That out of our bellies would not remain, but flow rivers of living water. We are sent out on kingdom mission on the Father's business. But here's the thing that I never saw in this passage. That yes, Jesus is sending you. Jesus is sending me. He's sending us out. But how? In what way? In what manner is Jesus sending us out? And here it is. He is sending us out in the exact same way that he was sent. Don't miss the implication. In the same mission. In the same power. With the same knowledge, with the same expectation, with the same equipping, with the same reliance upon, with the same accountability to the Father. In the same way, not similar, not mostly like, but kind of in just some ways, just a little bit different. No, in the same way. And understanding this changes everything. It changes how now we are to go into all our worlds. But before we get to the specifics of the how Jesus was sent, let's look closely at exactly what Jesus said to us. As my father has sent me, even so I'm sending you. Jesus begins with a word here that seems really insignificant, as. That word as comes from a Greek word, kathos, which means according to how and according to when. As. Going further into the text, there's those two words there, even so. Even so comes from three Greek words, which mean in the same way. So the passage of Scripture then reads like this. According to how and when Jesus was sent, in the exact same way, 
he is now sending us. Gathering the how is incredibly important because we are to go out in exactly the same way. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are to look like him and represent him, following his ways, his footsteps, what he's did. He said, now I want you to, now I've shown you what to do, showing you what to do. I now send you out and want you to do exactly the same that I've done to follow in my footsteps. Who's good at following instructions? Oh, we do have honest people in the room. Liar, liar, liars. <laughs> Who's ever made a cake and uh, either forgotten a step or an ingredient or put in another ingredient that you thought was meant to be there only to discover that it wasn't meant to be there? A fresh reminder to us all that following recipes are important because the how and the when, it matters. I mean, we've all tried, maybe not all tried, maybe some of the women in the room haven't tried, but most of the men surely would have gotten a piece of Ikea furniture, got that annoying piece of paper, that little booklet with diagrams, tossed it across the side of the room. I'm a man, I don't need instruction manuals. I need to get to the end of the project and look at a whole heap of parts that look really important, but yet somehow didn't get used in the putting together of this project. Instruction manuals are important because the how and the when, it matters. I remember multiple times throughout my childhood, I wasn't really good at focusing. I was diagnosed with ADD uh, at the time. Uh, you decide whether you think that was an accurate diagnosis or not. <laughs> But I was diagnosed with ADHD. I had a problem with, with focusing. And I can remember many times as my parents would try to explain something to me and they'd get both their hands on the side of my head and, and look at me and say, Michael, listen. You're not listening. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly does that too. I, I, <laughs> I'm trying to explain something to you to give you some... Some details, the details are important. Focus, child. Because the how and the when matters. Because we are to go in the same way. There's two more important words as we, as we look at this passage. And they read very similar, but they are not. In fact, they look the same, but they're just a variety of, of, of tense. And those two words are send and sent. They, they look dim, similar, but, but, but they are not. The first word sent comes from the Greek word apostolo, which is where we get the word apostolic and, and apostle. That word means to, to set apart or to send out on mission. The second word send comes from a Greek word pempo. That means direction out thrust out, to go out, to get moving. So Jesus' instruction to us is this. According to how my Father has set me apart and sent me on mission, in the exact same way I am thrusting and directing you out. Go. It's not just about the doing. It's about the how. It's not just the action of moving from where you are into another space. It's not just enough to go. It's all about the how we're being sent. It speaks about the manner and the way in which our being sent out is to unpack in our lives. So if we are to go into the, out into all our worlds in the exact same way, set apart on mission, it begs the question, how then was Jesus sent? 
What was the way in which the Father sent him? Simply stated, but powerfully lived, Jesus was sent, empowered on mission. The how, the method, the mode matters because as he was, so are we to be. First John chapter 4, starting at verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has in us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. In this, our love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. That as he is, so are we in this world. I mean, there's so many different ways that we could focus on how Jesus was sent. Uh, the most, I guess, obvious and one of the most well-known scriptures in the world is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. God so loved that he sent. The how Jesus was sent. He was sent with love. He was sent in love, and we are to go in the exact same way. God sends us out how into all our worlds in, in love. Because he loves the world, he now sends you, he now sends me. In the same way that Jesus was sent. Not similar, not kind of like, but just a little bit different. No, in the exact same way, we've been sent out, empowered, on mission. There are three things that I believe God is speaking to us specifically about today that Jesus went out and powered on mission with. Three things that he now seeks to send us out with also. With them, we will go out empowered on mission. Without them, we will exist powerless and purposeless. Three things that Jesus was clearly sent out with. Firstly, with a knowledge of who Father God was and a submission to his will. Secondly, a knowing who he himself was and his purpose. Thirdly, full of the power and the presence of Holy Ghost. I'll read that to you again. Three things Jesus was sent out with. Firstly, with a knowledge of who Father God was and is and a submission to his will. Secondly, a knowing of who he himself was and his purpose. And thirdly, he went out full of the power and the presence of Holy Spirit. Firstly, a knowledge of who Father God is and its submission to his will. Jesus knew his father. Jesus said, I only do what I see the father do. John chapter 10, verse 15. Even as the father knows me, I also know the father. And we too are to be sent out in the same way, knowing who our God is. Not knowing about God. It's a big difference to know about someone to knowing them powerfully, relationally, intimately. I don't know about Kelly. I know her. I know some things about her that would shock you. <laughs> but I don't know about Kelly. I, 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 I know her intimately. She knows me. Where to be sent out, not knowing about God, but knowing him intimately. It was the prophet Daniel who said these words. Those people. So there's, there's two groups of people. There's some in this camp, some not in this camp. But those people who know their God will be strong. And will do great exploits. Those who know their God. They're the ones. There's another group of people over here that don't know their God. Maybe know a lot about God possibly. But they don't know. But only those. Only those who know their God. Will be strong and do great exploits. If you don't know your God. Both in his character. 
and in his ability. Because just knowing one, one's not, not just enough. I, lo- I love the, 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 the story of the father with the son where he, he trusted God's ability but didn't know his character yet. And he said, God, you know, if you're willing. Jesus said, I'm both willing and able and healed his son. If you don't know who your God is, both in his character and in his ability, you might be going out somewhere, but you're not going out in the same way that Jesus was sent. You're not going out empowered on mission. Jesus knew who his God was and what his God could and would and did do. It's those who know their God and are submitted to his will who will do great exploits. We too are to go out empowered on mission when we know who our God is. Um, usually at least once a year, we like to produce a document and get it out into the hands of everyone in the church. It's a document, uh, and it's just titled aptly, uh, The Names of God. So every scripture passage in the Bible that refers to God in some way, we, we've just got them out on a document. And uh, what we'd love to be able to do, Ethan is hearing this for the first time today, is put it up on our discipleship website um, for uh, you to be able to grab a hold of and get in your hands and be able to pray through. Because it's only those that, that know their God. So you might have heard somebody talk about a God who's a provider. I don't know about that, but I know Jehovah Jireh. And he doesn't just provide, he is provider. You might have heard about a God who heals, but I, I don't know about that, but, but I know my God is healer. His name is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God who heals. You might have heard that God provides strength to those who are weak. I don't know about that, but I know my God is a strong tower. He is a refuge under the shadow of his wings. I can hide and find strength. The Lord God is my strength and my shield. It's only those who know their God. And Jesus isn't wanting to send you out ill-equipped. He's looking to thrust you out on mission, set apart, in the exact same way with the knowledge of who our God is. Secondly, Jesus knew who he was. John chapter 13 and verse 3. Jesus knew that he, that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. In the exact same way, Jesus is looking to send you out empowered with the knowledge of who you are. Do you know who you are? Or as we spoke about last week, have you walked past the mirror of his word? It's having a casual look in and then walked away and now forgotten entirely who you are. Who are you? Who has Christ empowered you to be? Because we are born again. Maybe you knew who you were, but do you know who you are? I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I don't know, I don't know about you, but me, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. That's who I am. I have the mind of Christ. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm strengthened according to his glorious might. I'm a partaker of his divine nature. I'm part of a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a purchased people. I'm free from the law of sin and death. I can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In his name, I can cast out demons and speak with new tongues. I am chosen. I am loved. I am redeemed. I am set apart. I'm the apple of his eye. Gathering, this is who I am. This is who you are. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Because again, Jesus isn't looking to send you out ill-equipped. In the same way, he's looking to send you out with a knowledge of who our Father God is. And with a knowledge of who you are in him. 
Thirdly, Jesus went out filled with the power of Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4 and verse 1. Jesus, full of Holy Spirit, left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. It would be easy to, to, to think and assume or draw your own conclusions that because Jesus was God, is God, that he just was sent to do his own thing. But, but we recognize two clear things here. Uh, total submission to the Father's will. I only do that which the Father does. And secondly, he didn't go out in his own strength and power. He submitted to the power and the presence of Holy Spirit. He was baptized in water. The presence of Holy Spirit came upon him and out he went filled, led by the Holy Spirit. As I was preparing, I wasn't particularly thinking to, to share around this, but I just feel prompted just now that Paul and I were talking about this in the week. It's interesting that unless we're walking to places and spaces that are nice and pleasant, it would be easy to think that that's not a space and a place that Holy Spirit would lead us into. But we see here quite clearly that it was the Holy Spirit that led Jesus into a place of discomfort, to a place of barrenness, not barrenness in the spirit, not loneliness in his connectivity to God, but a place of barrenness, of lack, of hunger, lead us into the spirit. How often I wonder there be times where God's led me into places and spaces that I've cursed the devil for. So this is exactly where I want you. I want to show you something, I want to do something in you. Right in the middle of that horrible place and that horrible space, season of lack. 40 days. I've, I've fasted a few times, but not 40 days. Holy Spirit led him. But I'm so glad that just as Jesus was sent out and powered by Holy Spirit, we too are sent out to live from and by the power of Holy Spirit, keeping in step with Him. Galatians chapter 5, starting at verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Aren't you thankful that Jesus doesn't send us out powerless in our own strength? I've shown you what to do. Now go and do it. Try your best. No, he sends us out. In fact, he says to the disciples, before you go, wait. Gather together in an upper room because the promised Holy Spirit's coming and you're going you're gonna to need him. He's not an optional extra. He's not just going to improve the journey slightly. I mean, you're going to need Holy Spirit just like Jesus did. You're going to need to be filled with Holy Spirit to do everything that I've asked you to do. You're going to need Holy Spirit to be able to step into those places that are so beyond you, but they're not beyond me. You're going to need to carry something that's so more powerful than you. You're going to need to house Holy Spirit. So before you go, go, yeah, but just hang on. Before you go, wait to be filled with the power and the presence of Holy Spirit. Because you shall receive power when Holy Spirit comes upon you. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in you. The same power. Did you get that? You say it with me this morning. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in me. Say it again. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in me in the exact same way that Jesus was sent out into all the world. He's now sending us with the same power, with the same knowledge of who our God is. Not I hope, I kind of heard God was good, I'll give this a crack. He wants us to know Him in His character, in His ability. He wants, we to, he wants us to know who we are in Him. We are not powerless. We are powerful. 
We can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. We can't do all things, but we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. The same power that, that, that flowed through His mortal body that saw the sick healed. same power lives on the inside of us. Jesus says, now I want you to go equipped, empowered, and take it thrust out. The first one is, is, is that, that's, that sent is, is, a, is a word of equipping, but the second one is like, now get, get moving. Throwing us out. A holy grenade. Today, Jesus continues to send us out to go towards need, towards promise, towards mission, empowered with the knowledge of who He, God, is, of who we are in Him, and who He, Holy Spirit, is and in and through us. I'm not weak and insipid, and helpless and hopeless but filled and empowered with authority. We are powerless. We have authority in Jesus' name. We are not victims. We are victors. We are victorious in Him. By the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb, we overcome. What's your testimony? What are you testifying about? What are you speaking about? What are you speaking into? What are you speaking over? Story you heard about or what you know about God? What are you saying in and of yourself? Who you were or who you are? Behold, I've made all things new. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. We are not weak and sipid and hopeless, but filled and empowered with authority, purpose, and Holy Spirit power. I wonder today in what way are you going out into all that is your world? Is it empowered on mission or powerless? and purposeless because we all go out in some way my prayer for us all today is that we would all go out in the exact same way those who know their God are strong and will do great exploits those who know who and whose they are move out in confident authority and those who know who works through them move out in power and confident expectation in the same way. When you stand with me as we finish and let me pray for you today. But again, we humble ourselves before you. We position our hearts posture our minds, our thoughts to receive of you. For some in the room today, Lord God, those, all those three things rung true. But maybe for some of us today, it was just one or the other. And it's so easy. The writer of Hebrews says to throw off those weights and sins that do so easily ensnare and entangle us. So easy to forget. It's so easy to get caught up. It's so easy to just to focus on those things that are happening in and around us and before us. And and, and unknowingly, Lord God, we, we diminish the authority in your name. We diminish, Lord God, who you are in our lives. It was King David who said, I come magnify the Lord with me. We can't make you any bigger than what you are, but in our own own estimation of who you are, Lord God, we want to magnify you. We want to see you for who you are, that you are not just powerful. You are all powerful. You are not just enough. You are more than enough. Our cup isn't just full. Our cup runs over, that you are the God of abundance. You are the God of breakthrough. You are the God who calls those things that aren't as though they are. You make make streams in the wilderness, a path in the desert, Lord God. You call those dead things back to life. This is who you are. 
And so we remind ourselves, Lord God, as we get sent out into our worlds, sent out into our weeks, sent out into our marriages, our homes, our families, the marketplace, Lord God. We remind ourselves of who you are. Almighty God, all-powerful God, all-knowing God, ever-present God. Redeemer, healer. You are our salvation, our hope, our firm foundation. You are our all in all. You are great and mighty, highly exalted, high and lifted up. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The one who was, the one who is, the one who is yet to come. You are Lord and Lord of all. We delight ourselves in you, but we remind ourselves of who you are. so easy to look at ourselves, Lord God. We know ourselves. We know our flaws, our failings, our weaknesses. And, but yet your ability to do something wonderful in us and through us isn't diminished by our past. There's consequences to the stupid things we do at times, Lord God, but you're a God who redeems, who heals, restores and forgives. Your ability to do something wonderful in it isn't diminished by our stupidity. It's only diminished by our lack of obedience. A lack of awareness of who you've created us to be. So I pray, Heavenly Father, this morning for full submission to your will, that we could be the same as Jesus to say, I only do that which I see the Father do. Sent. Set apart and sent out on mission. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that we are not victims. We are victors. We are the head, not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are overcomers. That we have the mind of Christ. That we are new creations in Christ Jesus. That we are partakers of his divine nature. We are part of a chosen generation, a holy nation set apart people it's who we are and Holy Spirit again we position ourselves before you and say would you come yet again and fill us afresh to overflow yes we want you but we need you same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us said, in your name, we will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. In your name, we would cast out devils and speak in new tongues. In your name. So Holy Spirit, in this place, in this moment, you see hungry hearts. Would you fill? Would you fall? Would you renew? Would you restore? Would you breathe? Would you empower? Would you equip? Would you illuminate? Would you stir? Stir up the gifts of God that were within us. We come before you, Lord God, and repent of going out ill-equipped, of going out not knowing, of just moving in our own strength, in our own ability. But Lord God, we pray for bold faith in your people. Grant unto your servants great boldness that you might move mightily and powerfully. Holy Spirit, we say move in Jesus' name.